Thanks to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Breaking costume news, May 2023. A month has passed since my last new costume update, and we've already been inundated with literally dozens of new park looks. So let's jump in and see what amazing new costumes you might have missed. What's up, costume fans? Dan here. Before we dive in, I just want to remind you that you can get early looks at videos like this and all Disney Dan videos by supporting us on Patreon. You can head on over there and help support all of the weirdness that Kenny and I birth on a regular basis. Thank you, patrons, for helping. Your help really helps. <laughs> Now, to kick off the costume news, I want to do a little bit of a victory lap, cause that's right, baby! Mission accomplished, boys! We brought them home! <laughs> Pete is back! Pete is back! That's right, a brand new Toontown is open at Disneyland, and we have got Pete! Yes, I am so excited! Brought back by the intervention of yours truly. That's right, thanks for watching that Pete video, thanks for making it so popular, because old Yellow Shoes caught wind, he got a little sniff of what we were cooking, and he brought Pete back! Mickey also got a new outfit for hanging out in uh, in the Toontown Plaza. It's, it's, it's trendy, it's hip, it's cool, I hate it. Put him back in that sorcerer outfit or I'm not coming. No, 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 it's cute, it's cool. I love, I love layered sweatshirt jacket Mickey. I think that's cute. This Pete that we got is the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse Pete. It's honestly perfect. It's very gentle and round and soft and non-threatening, despite the fact that it's also gigantic. It's a pretty nicely sized costume. He's in his giant overalls with those big old buttons. And I love the, the, the overstated texture of the denim of the overalls. It's so cute. And then of course he's got like the, the, the regular old character gloves and this perfectly sculpted head. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's Really, really beautiful. I love this beat. This is just Disneyland. So hopefully, maybe, come on guys, bring Pete over to Disney World. And if you can't do that, at the very least, add this Pete to the lineup of characters you dress up like Kingdom Hearts people and give me Kingdom Hearts Pete. Thank you for coming to my Pete TED Talk. Tron finally opened up, and for the media event, and what seems like the media event only, uh, Tron, Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Goofy made an appearance. I really despise when they do this kind of stuff where they're like, here's a really cool thing we invented that we're just showing the press so that you think you're gonna get something cool when you come, but they're nowhere to be found. I really wish these characters were wandering around. I mean, Tomorrowland even has a stage that we could have these characters on safely out of harm's reach from, from kids grabbing and pulling out the wires and Goofy's jacket or whatever. These characters are beautiful. I want to see them all the time. These costumes light up and are stunning. Mickey has this beautiful pinstriped grid suit. It's just fantastic. The pants are so neat, I love it. Minnie has this data disc polka dot design that is perfection. And look at that bow. Oh my gosh, why aren't we selling that bow in the parks right now? Goofy, his hat, I mean, oh my God, the hat. Donald's outfit is probably the best out of all of these because Donald's outfit previously was just sharp lines and, and little dots. And so it translates perfectly. I love, 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 love these costumes. Hey, you smell that? It smells like some new costumes and our sponsor for this video, Scentbird. Scent memory is literally my favorite kind of memory. Specific fragrances hit me and take me back to some of my favorite moments. But how do you find a new great smells to make new great memories? That's where Scentbird comes in. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that allows you to try a new designer fragrance or more than one each month for just $17. With each fragrance, you get a 30 day supply to try new fragrances before committing to a full size bottle. Scentbird sent me four amazing smells, but my favorite, my absolute favorite is the men's Skylar Willow Woods. With beautiful notes of balsam fir, pine, and willow, I wear this all the time. I'm already gonna order a full bottle. But they sent me other amazing smells too, such as Source Adages Ikana, with amazing notes of cardamom, coconut, grapefruit, lime, and musk. Ooh, this is a very spicy man scent. 
Along with colognes, they sent me a couple perfume samplers too, with beautiful notes of pear, soft wood, Turkish rose, and white musk. Oh my gosh, this one smells really good too. There are over 600 designer brands to choose from, from designers like Prada, Gucci, and Versace, to indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, and Confessions of a Rebel. They have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. Some fragrances cost over $150, and there are even some that go up to $500. Make sure to click the link below or scan the QR code and use my code DISNEY for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. That's about $8 for your first month. Hey, the 50th anniversary is over. They've taken the golden toilet paper off the castle and Mickey and Minnie and friends have new costumes for their castle shows. That's right, the Friendship Fair and whatever that show is called when you wander in way too early before they let you into the other lands. That, that show, that early morning show. All Mickey and Minnie appearances now have new costumes on the stage at the castle. And they're, they're really beautiful. They have this very specific color palette, a very Eastery. It's a lot of pale blues, purples, uh, gold accents, teals, uh, uh, violets, and pastels, but I like it. I, I, I like it. They're all very clean, fun looks, and honestly, compared to the rest of the color palette of the shows up there, it, they fit in perfectly. I think this is really great, and I, th I wish we would give them new costumes every year. Give me a reason to come back and watch this very standard Friendship Fair show in front of the castle. I love variety. The Princess and the Frog segment with all of like the flapper dancers and all their beautiful pastels, I mean, they looked really, really great together. Kenny and I were actually present in this weird crossover before they took all the decorations off the castle where they looked really good with all of the gems and, and added filaments and it kind of bumps me up, but at least they look good with the, the color palette of like the purple and blue of the castle right now. It, that color's not going anywhere, guys. They just gave Mickey and Minnie a whole outfit that matches it. Disney Cruise Line has kicked off their 25th Silver Sailing Anniversary and the whole gang has got new sailor outfits. Mickey has this gorgeous tri-colored jacket that is a stunning. Minnie Mouse, Captain Minnie, let me give her the respect she deserves, and she is serving pants that just keep delivering. My God, I don't want to see Minnie in a skirt ever again. Only aggressive pants. Chip, Dale, Donald, and Goofy, of course, all get the sailor boy look. These four look like they're just itching to do the YMCA. And Daisy, oh my God, stop it. Stop it with that jacket, Daisy. Look at that jacket on Daisy. She gets the best looks because she is the best. We also got to look at some concept art for the Pride Night outfits coming to Disneyland's After Dark Pride Night in June. I can't wait to see these costumes in real life. They look colorful. Clarabelle Cow's outfit is going to be the best. Look at it. What, they're doing something interesting to my boy Donald. I don't know what the, like what kind of 90s aggressive Saved by the Bell vibe we're trying to get from Donald, but you know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I can't wait to see a Donald sized bucket hat. So they have this new thing at Disneyland called Throwback Night. Uh, apparently they're filling the park with a bunch of old vintage characters you can meet, including versions of animatronic characters. Uh, it'll never work. What's that? It did work? Well, what do you know? That's progress for you. <laughs> I wrote this whole bit to kind of give you the energy of the ride. Did you feel it? Did you feel it? <laughs> All right, now Kenny, slowly rotate me away. These costumes are spectacular. Mwah. Chef's kiss to these costumes. I love this. Give me more of this. I want to have a Christmas family photo op with the entire Progress family. Just forget about those seven dwarves that everyone they put scarves. I don't. I don't care about them anymore. Give me that space. Give me the whole Christmas J.C. Penney photo like opportunity with this '80s family. I would love it. I would. I just give me that, please. I would die for the Progress family. There's a brand new parade over at Tokyo Disneyland called Harmony in Color, and you are not going to want to miss this. This parade is packed with a bunch of amazing new ensemble costumes and great looks for the Fab Five in their wonderful, wild, colorful costumes. Why does Tokyo get all the cool stuff? That's not fair, man. Look at Mickey Mouse's hat. That might be the coolest hat I've ever seen on a Disney Park character ever. Look at that. I just want to touch it. I want to shake it around like a fidget. I want to see how it moves. 
I love Minnie Mouse's bow and her little dress. It's perfect. And Donald and Daisy look absolutely phenomenal. The, the, the lineup of costumes for this parade for the Fab Five, they all feel like celestial gods. The parade is also beautiful. Kenny, give him a quick parade float montage. Montage! Montage! This is a parade float montage! Oh, speaking of parade floats, let, let me just, let me just, let me just break your brain for a moment with what they did to Elastigirl. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. It's gorgeous. It's horrifying. I'm, 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 I'm speechless. I, all I want to do is talk about it. I don't know what has happened. I feel like I've entered the matrix. This is the craziest thing I've ever seen. This is a giant woman. All I want to do is see you stretch into a giant woman. That's not physically how her legs work, is it? Like, I'm suddenly so unnerved by seeing her stretched out in real life. But perhaps the greatest thing to come out of the Harmony in Color Parade is our first look at a Zootopia character, Clawhauser. Other than, you know, Nick and, and Judy Hopps. We've had those for a long time. I'm talking new Zootopia land energy. And look at this costume. It's gorgeous and hideous at the same time. The horror is primarily just the fit of the police uniform. It's just so, it's just so, it's just so ill-fitting. And there's the oddest implementation of the arms. They just don't, they look weird. He's got these really thick arms and these incredible tiny wrists. What's going on here? I love the face of this costume. The face of this costume looks like it was pulled right out of the cartoon, except if you look really closely around his like jowls, there clearly is like a zipper line for like the performer to like leave their head hanging out backstage when <laughs> before the parade's gotta go and they've gotta kick on the fans. Like there's this really bizarre line in the midst of like his like incredibly chubby neck. He also has a permanent donut in his hand and his jacket, his uniform, is covered in powdered sugar remnants from eating donuts, which is kind of funny. Uh, and the necktie bizarrely is sewn directly onto the suit. So, uh, but I, that's just got to be a safety thing, right? So like kids don't like, hey, something to pull? Sure. Huh? You know? <laughs> it is a little weird seeing a cop in a Disneyland parade, though. I'm just going to say that. You know? I cannot wait for the new Zootopia like land to open up at Hong Kong Disneyland. That Clawhauser animatronic they had there is so cool. This is going to be such a fun land. Oh, quick, while we're in Japan, let's hop over to Universal Japan, where an incredible parade, No Limit, just dropped. Look, I know I'm not Universal, Dan, okay? I've tried it. I've tried covering these parades, and not a single one of you watched the video on an amazing nighttime parade they did, so I'll just fit it into videos like this. Check out this parade. Hey, Kenny, you know what this is? It's the perfect time for another parade montage. <laughs> just reuse the clip of me singing it earlier. I'm not singing it again. Montage! 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 This is a parade float montage! This thing's got everything! Pokemon, Mario Kart, this is really, really cool. Look at all of these beautiful floats. My mind is like blown with this. And that's not all. That's not all over there in, in, in Universal Japan. They've also got the Wizarding World plussed up in ways that like make me incredibly jealous as someone who lives here in the States. Oh my gosh, they have outfitted the land with all sorts of magical creatures, including a Niffler, which is the cutest little thing, and a full-sized four-legged hippogriff. What? Look at this behemoth. I can't imagine having to work around this thing. He's got a full danger butt. <laughs> These animals come from the entire breadth of the wizarding world, not just fantastic beasts. That little pink thing, I don't know what it's called, a floof floof triple, triple dribble boy. Um, that thing, that's from the first series of movies. Luna Lovegood loved those things. It's the full breath of the wizarding world, Kenny. Dun, da, 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 da. Kenny doesn't care about the wizarding world, but I know what he does care about, the MCU. And some stuff has been brewing at Avengers Campus at Disneyland. How do you like that transition, Kenny? <laughs> Mantis has officially joined the dance-off at Avengers Campus, and I love it. She she comes out alongside Star-Lord, or at least a man impersonating Star-Lord in the strangest wig I have ever seen in my entire life. This guy doesn't look anything like future Kevin Sorbo Chris Pratt, but I'll, 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 I'm fine with it because Mantis looks incredible. I love this Mantis costume. The giant black contacts, the huge lashes, the little antenna. This Mantis, and on top of her, like the beautiful 
look of the costume, the actress is also impeccable. I felt like I was just like watching some Mantis energy alongside a Star-Lord cosplayer. Look, we asked for a Panda May costume in our previous video about Epcot characters, and it looks like somebody up there was listening to us because at the most recent springtime surprise 10K run Disney event in the Canada Pavilion, you could find the five boys of Four Town. Uh, th these boys were doing their best to try to harmonize at like three o'clock in the morning wearing like unironed uh, yellow shirts. Like guys, like could we not have ironed these shirts before we put them on? I, I'm still seeing the JCPenney creases uh, on the on the button downs on these boys, uh, but, they, but they're cute. The, the costumes are cute, very simple yet effective. Uh, and you know, they, the, the, the five looked like they were having a good time, you know? And a lot of thirsty, you know, millennial mom runners loved it. They were just like, yes! You want it? I want it! They were very into it. The Make-A-Wish Foundation was forever immortalized in a window ceremony at Main Street in Disneyland. It's rare to see Main Street get a new window design. And as you know, Main Street is littered with essentially the credits of the making of Disneyland Park hidden in window art. It's, it's kind of fascinating and, and beautiful. And now Make-A-Wish is a permanent part of the parks and Mickey and Minnie got a brand new custom look for the specific celebration. And what I love about these two new looks is that over on Instagram, they shared with us a very intimate look at how they design these new patterns, pick the fabrics, and implement new designs for Mickey's jackets and Minnie's dresses. I, we rarely get this kind of behind the scene look with costuming, and so I love this moment and I wanted to share it with you now. It's pretty cool. And the costumes are gorgeous. I love Minnie's dress, Mickey's jacket's great, and the Make-A-Wish Foundation is awesome. And as a final note to this video, I thought this was just something fascinating that you all needed to see. And you know what? Only like, only like the true diehard fans are this deep into the episode. So congrats. This is your reward. John Oliver over on HBO's Last Week Tonight with John Oliver has officially debuted the first unofficial Steamboat Willie bootleg mascot. As he has slowly been establishing use in the opening credits of his show, now he can say that Steamboat Willie is a part of the show and has made a full costume for him and it is wild. It's incredible to hear him him joking around with what are some core ideals of his character uh, and, and only the way that John Oliver really could could make him say things, you know, it's it gets dark. How would you say happy birthday to the kids, Mickey? Oh, you're not special. Nothing about you is special. <laughs> and that voice is awfully familiar. I mean, I, I don't know, every time I'm listening to it, I'm, I'm really having a hard time bearing it. All right, there you go. There's the over two dozen new costumes that have debuted in literally the past like 30 to 45 days. Hope you guys are enjoying all of these episodes where I cover all of the new costumes that debut in the parks. It's fantastic having you watch, like, comment, subscribe, all those amazing things you do to support this channel. Find me over on all of the holy social medias where you can show me pictures of you meeting all of these new costumes if you've had that chance. Like on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Patreon, TikTok, all of the great places. Thanks for watching, guys. As always, you rock.